Good morning, everyone. Um, do you have good speed on the sound? Good. Okay. Well, first, I want to be Makir Tov and thank uh, Dean Strauss and Professor Nissenfeld for your gracious introduction and friendship. Uh, this institution is a very special one to me. I met my wife in my father's class. My brother is a musmach, he's a rabbi, a rav from Yeshiva University. We all attend, including my brother, the Cardoza Law School, where I have the privilege of teaching uh, at this stage. Um, I also want to be makir tov to my father, uh, Leon Wilds, who is um, my uh, personal immigration rav, my role model, and, uh, and a wonderful uh, substantive partner for the last, thank God, 20 years. Um, I would like to thank you again for inviting me to the Kukin Lecture Series. It's a pleasure to speak to not only motivated and enthusiastic students, Daniel Hazan joined us as a, an intern in our office, and if this is the stock of what this institution is putting out, it has a, a great legacy before it. I hope that I will convey some practical advice and give you a couple of tidbits and sense of what you're embarking on, and yet in this chaotic and oftentimes unpredictable aspects of this economy, it's import, important for you to understand that what you're embarking on is, yes, daunting and yet um, overwhelming, but at the same time very important. It's very important in the classroom setting to get a snapshot, if you would, of what's happening out there in the real world. And I would urge each of you to be in touch with me personally if you feel that I could help and mentor you. As you see, I spend a lot of time doing that. You would say that it was somehow in my DNA, it's certainly in my children's DNA, to become an immigration lawyer. My father started his own office in the 1960s, and before my mom and he started me, I had no idea that this was a destination that I would enjoy. As a son of an immigration lawyer, my life in the field uh, began before I even took the bar exam. I had the opportunity to watch my father interact with so many people through the years, knowing, of course, that he had the same personality that he presented to me as his son as he did to clients, and that, that ethic and that ethos continues to this day. I was fascinated how a seemingly exclusive small body of law affected so many aspects of American culture. I spent two days in college for four years. I effectively went into the practice those three days. I went to college eight in the morning till eight at night so that I could work in the firm three days. I remember as a young child, even before that, going to Manhattan just to cut scrap paper on Sundays so that I could be with my father. And if I was a good kid, I'd get a big fat book and put it on a shelf. Of course, it had no pictures, so I never read the damn thing, but it was there, and it was a sign of uh, entitlement and friendship. No doubt, starting a business in the 1960s um, is something that was daunting then. But since then, and the privilege that I was given, I've never taken this as an act of entitlement. I've never taken it for granted. As leaders of tomorrow and the voice of commerce of tomorrow, it's important for you to draw the right conclusions and to guide yourself ethically and properly, and in no matter, act as if you're entitled to anything in this world. In these difficult times that we face, with all the uncertainty, and as we read the newspapers and those that are watching this video, today is the day that this whole escapade is unfolding in the streets of Boston. It's important for us to understand that your true character will be revealed, not only by the kind of job that you seek, but the way with which you actualize your own dreams. To set the context for the law practice, it would be useful to note that there are five major areas of practice that our firm is known for. We have business immigration practice, visas for business people coming here. I teach that course at Cardoza Business Immigration Law. We have a family-based practice where we're helping people who marry or try to reunify themselves on you or so with their family members. We have a compliance unit for foreign students who may be in this classroom or in the universities throughout the United States who then want to go into the workforce. Or for Americans that go into the workforce, there are immigration requirements that employers have to uh, thoroughly comply with. We have a litigation group where we deal with people that are facing removal or we're going into the federal courts. And then we have a consular practice where we deal with the American embassies the world over. Uh, simply put, in our field, a good lead is anybody with a pulse and a good accent. Um, if I had to go around the table at one of these business meetings where everybody turns around and says, hi, my name is Michael, I haven't had a drink in 90 days, I'm looking for the people with accents, people who are in a position of trust with people that have connections abroad. 
We have an office in New York on 53rd and Madison. I'm 48 years old. We've been paying rent in that building for 46 years. And we have an office in New Jersey where I had the privilege of serving as a mayor. And we're opening next month, uh, hopefully, in Miami, all relegated to the practice of U.S. immigration and nationality law. I spend my week speaking to hundreds of people throughout the day, Skype, telephone, in person. I carry four Blackberries. I average between 2,000 to 3,500 emails a day, depending on the amount of traffic that we have. We serve as counsel to several other law firms uh, in interest as well. When I was mayor, if God forbid there was a shooting or a fire, I'd have to go back, and then I have to return to my office to this daunting task of trying to help uh, people. Despite the opportunity presented, I was concurrently interested in public service. I had the privilege of serving as a, an auxiliary police officer with the NYPD for 10 years, as a federal prosecutor with the U.S. Attorney's Office for nearly four years, with the city of Englewood as its city councilman and then mayor for 11 years, where I reside with my beautiful family. All of this may appear to be a confused brand. Is he going to get a green card from my housekeeper or is he going to fill my pothole? was the kind of questions that I used to see when I read the material on Google myself. But all of this I maintained by, while maintaining my faith. I'm over 20 year member of Hatzalah and I'm a part of the Hever Kedisha since I'm 14 years old. There are no pockets in the kittel. So no matter how much money you make, whatever you profess in life, there is something more important that we all ascribe to. Collectively, the diverse group of visa petitioners and beneficiaries we represent have all left their indelible imprint on the fabric of our nation's society. My, my dad's work, particularly with Beatles frontman John Lennon, had a profound effect on the perception of our profession. Since then, I've embarked on careers in law and in politics, these realms all dedicated to the advocacy of diversity, equality, and social justice. In all, I've had a chance to help deport some bad guys, help some good guys remain on our soil, and evaluate the urban, suburban, and city perspectives that immigrants go through when they journey into our country. The U.S. itself, as a nation of immigrants, became a magnet to industrious pers pr um, prospective immigrants from the nations of the world over. Our practice and our firm has expanded to include representations of American firms anxious to attract persons with these needed skills. As this is a business-focused seminar, I'm going to focus my business-related aspects of our practice. If anyone has any immigration-related questions, feel free to address them.